This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You can make your own beautiful website and online store with this all-in-one platform. Hi everyone, so in this video I am using my brand new sketchbook. I'm finally done the other one. I posted a tour of it a week or so ago. If you want to see all the drawings that I made in that sketchbook, it was a bigger sketchbook than I usually use and I was wanting to finish that sketchbook for quite a long time, but um, recently I had a lot of client work and I've just been doing a lot of things and it took me so long to fill that sketchbook, like a few months. It was under a year, maybe like eight months or something. And I actually bought this sketchbook a few months ago. I got it at an art store because I was anticipating uh, finishing my sketchbook soon, but then I like took on some client work and I wasn't able to sketch as much. But it's finally done and now I'm finally able to start my new sketchbook. So of course I had to film the process for you. Um, for some reason, I really wanted to draw squirrels. So I started off by drawing some red squirrels and I used a Prismacolor a very thin pencil to sketch this out in the color like pumpkin orange or something like that. I think it's just called pumpkin. And then I use some watercolors on top. I believe these are my Shinhan watercolors, the Shinhan professional watercolors. Um, I like them a lot because they're just like a good value for your money. Um, so those are like some of my favorite watercolors to use, especially in my sketchbook. I have some more expensive ones. They're called the Schmincke Horadam ones. And uh, those are more expensive, but they're very pigmented and translucent. But I kind of find that I don't like translucent watercolors as much. Like, I like them to be translucent, but not completely. Like, I don't mind if there's a little bit of opacity, um, especially in the darker... No, especially in the lighter colors. I kind of like the darker colors to be a bit more translucent, but that doesn't usually happen. Like, I always find the darker colors are more um, chalky, so maybe... Using the more translucent watercolors would be good with dark colors, um, but I don't really know what I'm saying anymore. I also wanted to share with you guys that my shop is going to be updating very soon this week. It might have already been updated by the time you're watching this, I'll let you know, but very, very soon I am adding some new products. I'm adding two different washi tape designs. I'm selling washi tape for the first time and I'm really excited. A sticker sheet that has like 17 stickers on it of like little cozy ducks and sweaters and some fall leaves. It's very, very autumn themed. And I also have... I'm also adding a bunch of stickers and prints that are leftovers from Patreon that have never been on sale before. So you can grab those if you want. And I'm adding, uh, I have sticker mystery packs. Those are restocked because they always sell out really fast. And I also am adding, um, I used to have, well, I still have a 10 print pack, like a pack of 10 prints. And you can, it's like a mystery which ones you'll get. It's like random prints in a pack. Um, and I decided to do, not 10, it was five. I had a five print pack and I decided to add 10. So if you want to get like a bunch of my prints, um, it's a mystery which ones you'll get, but if you want to get a whole bunch, you can either get a five pack or a 10 pack. The 10 pack is the newest addition to that. So this will be kind of like my little fall update. Oh, there will also be a new print that's never been for sale anywhere before. It's the chicken wreath painting. Um, you'll see that there too. And everything from the last update and tons of stickers. I have so many things for sale in my shop now. The catalog is huge, so you're bound to find something you like if you like my art. And if shipping is too expensive for you, you can always just order stickers because sticker shipping is the cheapest shipping option, even the sticker sheet. So there is that more affordable option for you if you want. Um, but I'm really excited about the next update. I actually ordered a bunch of boxes because now that I have washi tape, um, I can't really get away with shipping things in flat mailers because the washi tape will not fit properly in those. So I have these tiny, cute little boxes. So if you order washi tape, it'll probably come in one of those boxes. Um, or bubble mailers, but I don't really like bubble mailers because it's hard to find ones that are like eco-friendly because they tend to use a lot of plastic and they're hard to recycle and stuff like that. So I think boxes are a good option. And I just love having a shop like this. I love to make things and prepare them and like get them ready. Like some of my favorite tasks to do are like doing inventory and organizing things and like adding new listings and designing products and, and sending them off and like approving them to be manufactured and then like getting them in the mail and opening it is like one of the most like satisfying and rewarding things. And I really want to make like more stationary stuff and tote bags. I think that would be a lot of fun. 
I also really want to make patches because I think patches are just so cute and I really, I really want to make some. Um, I have a lot of ideas. If there's any products you'd like to see from me, like specific things like, like lanyards, sticky notes, more washi tape, more acrylic keychains, maybe wooden pins, tote bags. Um, I'm probably not going to do t-shirts or anything like that because I don't want to deal with the sizing. Um, but yeah, if there's anything you want to see from me, let me know because I'm always open to suggestions. I asked my patrons about that. I did like a poll on what things they'd most, they would most like to see from me in my store. And I'm going to kind of use that as a guide going forward. But I think I forgot to put a bunch of things on that list, so I have to do a new one. Um, but also, I wanted to tell you that I have a new Patreon print for this month. It's the September one. It's very, like, fall-summer themed. Like, that transition from summer to fall, I feel like it kind of captures that vibe. Um, it's of a cute little cat sitting on a, on a sunflower. So it's either a giant flower or a really tiny cat. And there's just a bunch of autumn leaves and sunflowers and fall colors around him. And I have the sketchbook page as well, which I really like, and the sticker. So if you want to grab this, it's just $16 over on my Patreon, and you get this whole pack sent to you. There's no shipping. Um, shipping is included. Any country, I send out my Patreon to, like, anywhere in the world, basically. So if you want this, it's kind of a good way to get some of my art, and you can cancel or upgrade at any time. And also my, like, other tiers have other rewards. So my $1 tier, you get some updates, you get some, like, newsletters um, behind the scenes of my life and things that I work on. And the $5 tier, you get to see my sketchbook as I make it. So about once a month, I'll scan all the, all the pages that I did. And I also post sketches from projects I'm working on or client work and things like that. I just wanted to give you a little spiel about my Patreon, but now we can get back to the video. I actually recorded this video in two separate days. The first day I drew all the squirrels and the next day I drew everything else that you'll see. Um, but when I came back in the next day, I was like, I really don't like this squirrel sketch. Just like the way that I drew it really bothered me. And sometimes people, whenever I cover a sketch in my sketchbook, there's always some people that are like, why'd you cover that? I really liked it. But sometimes it just makes me feel better to cover things because I'm like, ugh. I just don't want to look at this page. I want to feel a little more proud of the first page, even though it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things, but I just kind of like wanted to cover up that sketch. So eventually I do take a sticky note to it, to that squirrel, and I cover it, but I leave the other ones because um, I actually realized something recently that um, when I'm looking back at my old art and specifically art that I didn't like at the time that I can like distinctly remember, really struggling with it and like hating it and being so disappointed and like battling it trying to like make it look good I look back at it like months later and I'm like why did I hate this so much it actually looks fine so I'm trying to remember that like maybe if I don't like it now I'll like it in the future um but I think sometimes it bothers me when there's like clear anatomical errors and I don't want people to think that I like don't know how to do anatomy but it's just like it's just a sketch like it doesn't have to be that serious and I've always kind of tried to take that approach to sketchbooks because it really is the place where you can be your messiest like this is what it's meant for it's meant to be a place where you can explore and draw whatever you want and not like judge yourself too much but of course it's hard to not do that um, you want to make nice art like that's kind of one of the fun things about being an artist you can make nice looking things so I think it's okay to some days like be a little more picky and some days not care at all what things look like. I think that balance is good because it kind of keeps up your like um, your like level of polish, but also your ability to like sketch freely, be a little more carefree about how things look. Because I found that once I started to draw quicker and not labor over the lines too much, I think my line quality improved and... The draw my drawing started to not look as stiff because I find if I draw slowly things will look stiff but if I draw quickly and try to just like capture the motion and the gesture of whatever pose or scene I'm trying to do it always looks way less stiff and more energized and that's kind of what I what I try to keep in mind um because sometimes I can like fall into that trap of drawing things very like stationary like I, I think a lot of the drawings that I do when they depict like subjects and characters, they're just kind of like standing there. Like even if it's an animal, they're just kind of like standing there, um, not really doing much, like just like sitting or standing. 
Now it's time for a quick break to thank this video's sponsor, which is Squarespace. If you haven't heard of Squarespace, they're an online platform where you can make your own website, your own online shop, a portfolio, a blog. It can be anything you want and you can customize it to fit whatever aesthetic you're going for. I use my Squarespace website as a place to show my work. So one of my favorite things they have are their portfolios and galleries. It's actually really easy to upload all of your artwork as images and then you can easily drag them around and arrange your gallery how you'd like it to look. And they have automatic image scaling so you can be sure that your images will look nice next to each other on your site. They have a lot of templates to choose from that look great on their own but you can also customize them to fit your needs and add whatever info you want and you can connect all your social media accounts and I think it's really important to cross promote yourself wherever you are so doing that on your website as well is great and Squarespace makes it easy to do that. If this sounds interesting to you head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com slash gelarts and you can get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and on to the rest of the video. I don't really do a lot of like poses because I don't consciously think to do that. Um, I kind of just let myself draw things that feel right in the moment and that's where I make my best work I think but I'm trying to like remember that I can draw things more dynamic if I want to and actually the project I've been working on lately um, is a card game called Varmints. And the art direction I get for that, it's a lot of different kinds of like little critters, like little rodents and varmints. And there's always like like a certain pose they have to be in. And I find that's actually really helping me to like draw more dynamic things and not like be so stationary. Um, and also since I'm drawing for like someone else, um, I almost like want it to look better. Like I want it to like to like be a better drawing and I try to think about the pose more and it's more like intentional because there's like a purpose for the drawing and I had art direction for it. So I think that's actually really helping me a lot with my like animal drawings and my um, my poses and just like depicting characters. Um, also, if you're interested in that game, it's like a cute card game. I've played it because um, I got sent the, the demo cards and it's actually like really fun to play. Um, it's actually like pretty com complex, but it's not complex once you like know how to play it and once you know the rules. Um, I had a lot of fun playing it with a few people that I showed um, in real life and the the artwork print quality is so good. The colors came out like perfectly. Um, and actually this is gonna be launched on GameFound on October 24th. So if you want to support this project, um, it also goes towards charity to help like like a wildlife charity. Um, basically for every 1,000 past the funding goal on GameFound, Varmint will donate 10% of all gross revenue to urban wildlife rehabilitation and treatment. And I think that's like, that's such a like good thing. The support goes directly towards treating injured critters, nurturing orphaned young ones, and giving old and sick environments a safe and caring place to live out their last days. I just think that's such a good cause. So you support wildlife and you also get a really fun game. And there's like artwork and stickers. You get a free sticker if you just follow the page. And one, so once you back it, you'll get the free sticker added to your rewards. So I just wanted to update you about that project because I think it's really cool and I'm having a lot of fun with it and it's, just, it's coming together. It's, uh, we're nearing the final stretch and it's really exciting. So the next day when I drew in the sketchbook, I wanted to draw dogs because I really like drawing dogs. I just think their anatomy is really fun and there's so many different species. You, you can depict like different types of dogs, but they have like similar anatomy. So once you kind of warm up with like the dog anatomy in mind, you can draw a bunch of different breeds and it's just a lot of fun because there's like a lot of poses of dogs. There's a lot of dog photography out there available because they're like pets. So there's tons of photos of dogs because people keep them as pets. And it's not like a like a moose or something that like only like nature photographers have photos of. So there's a lot of reference material, a lot of variety out there for dogs. And I really like drawing the dogs that are like um, like greyhounds. Because I think greyhounds are some of my favorite dogs. That's why my Patreon tier is named after them. Because um, I just think they're so, like, they're just so, like, cute and little and they run really fast. And I just really like their um, their anatomy and their, like, proportions. Um, I, and they're really fun to draw. So I wanted to draw some greyhounds and just some, like, dogs. 
And I also was experimenting with this technique where I took like a really thin marker and kind of scribbled like a controlled scribble because I've always liked that textured look that some people put on their drawings where you like you like take a pen or pencil and you kind of like do little little lines or little little hatch marks to fill in an area instead of just a solid color and um I've always wanted to like incorporate that more into my art but I've never found the right way to do it so I think sketching can really help and after like filling this page and sketching in the sketchbook I just have like the itch to draw more in it and to do more I want to draw more dogs and play around with that style but I have so many other things I need to do so I'm like how am I going to find the time to to draw I have so many like hobbies ongoing and like video games and video games I want to play um I have so many things I want to do. I'm like, I need to fit in sketching somewhere. So I'll try. I'll try to fit it in because I, re I really want to draw more. I really want to use this sketchbook a lot. Um, but I just get so caught up with all the other art and drawing and other things I need to do. So there's that. Oh, another thing I need to update you on. There's so many things to talk about in this video, but um, October is coming. So that means Inktober is coming. But for me, it means Geltober is coming, which is It'll be the second year I'll make my own prompt list for um, drawing every day in October. You can use whatever medium you want. Um, you can use my prompt list and look at the prompt of the day and get inspired to draw from that prompt. And then you post it with the hashtag. It'll be hashtag Geltober and hashtag Geltober 2022. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of people have been asking me if I'm going to do it and I, I am. I'm still like curating the list and trying to find good prompts. Um, basically what I do with the prompts or like the way that I that I um, come up with the prompts is I try to think of things that would go with like a little critter or animal drawing things that are inspired by like animals and critters but you don't have to draw an animal if you're gonna do Geltober you can draw whatever you want but for me um, I'm gonna be drawing animals or like people with animals or anything like woodland um, so the prompts are things like you know fangs or horns or fluffy or slimy or like forest or snowy stuff like that very like nature critter animal related you can even do like mythical creatures I'm still I'm still trying to figure out exactly like exactly what I want it to be but um it, it'll be similar to last year and I'll be posting that on Instagram and maybe I'll make a community post on YouTube so that you can keep an eye out for when the list drops. If you want to join us in Geltober, last year was a lot of fun. We got like over a thousand submissions, which is really cool. So I hope this year we can do it again. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to draw every day, but I really want to. I was thinking maybe I'd make a reel every day of my drawing. Um, that might be like less pressure, honestly, because I find posting like just a photo People can like see your drawing and see all the flaws and I feel a little bit more self-conscious but when it's a reel it's like constantly moving and plus Instagram basically only pushes reels these days so maybe I'll do Geltober on reels and my story. We'll see. I think it'll be fun. I don't know if I'm gonna do it every day but I definitely want to and that's gonna be my goal. So yeah I'm excited about that. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm so glad that it's fall and I got like a new sketchbook and I'm updating my store and I just feel like there's a lot of new stuff I'm doing and it's it's pretty pretty fun and inspiring and I've been really enjoying my work lately so that's good. Um, I hope you like this video. Um, let me know if you were drawing while watching it or what you were doing while watching it. Um, anything you're working on in particular and let me know which sketch was your favorite. I think my favorite is the little like head shot of the dog. I think it's really cute. I just really like the way that that turned out. It was a lot of fun. Um, thanks for watching me complete the first page in my new sketchbook. Um, I always like to share this with you. It's kind of like a nice fresh start. It's almost like when you start a new sketchbook, it's like you're starting a new chapter in your art journey. So I'm really excited. So thanks again for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.